Hi guys, and happy Thursday. Yesterday I made a video about our beliefs and how beliefs are self-fulfilling prophecies, whether we think we can or think we can't. Either way, we're right. If we believe that something will happen, it's, we're likely to make it happen. If we believe that something won't happen, we're likely to make it not happen, whether conscious or unconscious. And I realized when I got up this morning that I did not talk about where our beliefs come from and what beliefs really are. And so I wanted to get into that a little bit today. I, th I think it's important. And so, first of all, um, beliefs often come from experiences. One of my favorite acronyms or paradigms is EBAR, which means experiences lead to beliefs, beliefs lead to actions, and actions lead to results. Oftentimes when we're trying to change our results, we'll look at our actions or our behaviors. What, what did we do to cause that or bring that about or not? But we, we rarely go a, a level or two below and say, well, what are the beliefs that are behind these actions? Uh, actions really come from beliefs. If we believe things, we're very likely to act in a certain way in accordance with those beliefs. And then taking it one step further and saying, where did those beliefs come from? What experiences led to those beliefs? Oftentimes our beliefs come from childhood. They're given to us by our parents at a very young age. And we start to interpret the world through these beliefs. We have beliefs about ourselves. We have beliefs about other people. We have beliefs about how society should operate as a whole. And we view those beliefs as truth. This is how it is. This is the way of the world. And so what's really interesting is that we start going around and living our lives in accordance with beliefs that may or may not even be true or real, or somebody else might have a different belief, but we just feel like, well, this is the way it is for me. I'll give you a couple of quick examples. When I was a child, I was taught to always clean my plate, no matter what. Uh, it would be a waste of money to let food go to waste, and we didn't have a lot of money at the start of you know my, my childhood, and so it was, you don't waste food, you don't waste money, you clean your plate if you're at a restaurant or if we're at home, if it goes on your plate, you eat it. And David, my partner, has a very different belief. He actually was taught the opposite when he was a child. Hey, always leave a little bit of food left over on your plate so that you don't seem or become gluttonous. And as uh, you know, the last six years have gone by with David, I've noticed that David has an easier time keeping weight off and maintaining his weight than I do. And it's easy to say, well, that's because he's a man and I'm a woman and women, as they get older, they have a harder time managing weight. Or maybe he is uh, more fit than you. He does more exercise. Uh, and, and the reality is, you know, maybe some of that's true, but I believe now that there's a part of it that has to do with the fact that I feel I have to eat everything on my plate, even when I'm full, whereas David knows when to stop and he will often stop early and he controls his portions better because of that. And that's what's led to those different actions and results. Another belief that I used to have was that I could not ski and that I could not run a marathon. I'd, I'd never been a runner before. I couldn't even run a mile or a 5K without stopping. And I just said to myself, you're not a marathon runner. That's not who you are. You just won't be able to get through 26.2 miles. And uh, also skiing, that I would break my leg or that I would be injured. And I just thought, you know, I, I'd be very dangerous for me. I, um, As I was becoming a runner, I thought you could just go skiing and break your leg or get injured and then you'll never be able to run again. And I started having new experiences. I was meeting a lot of people through my run club at the time that said, oh my gosh, of course you could run a marathon. That's how it was for me too. I didn't think I could do it. I could barely run a 5K and, and I trained and I worked at it and then I was able to do it. And, and you could definitely do it. Or, you know, you're not going to break your legs skiing. That's very rare. It's not common. It's you'll stay on the bunny slopes. You'll go to the green slopes. You'll start slowly. You'll get an instructor. You'll just kind of drop off to the side. It's not dangerous like you think. But I had spent years believing that these things weren't really going to be a possibility for me. The moment I changed my beliefs and said, okay, I'll give it a try, I was able to run a marathon. I have become an avid skier. And through the experience of doing these things, I began to believe, oh my gosh, it's totally possible. I, I had the experience of doing it once and it went okay. So I came back and had more experiences and now I've taught myself a new belief, which is I can do either of these things really well. I've skied uh, 21 days in the last couple of years and I've ran uh, 11 full marathons and you know over 190 half marathons. And so I, I had bad beliefs, faulty belief windows, but I was able to make a change and adjust those beliefs. 
Um, another belief that wasn't serving me very well in my former relationships was that I believe that couples that spend a lot of time apart are not happy. They do it because they're trying to escape each other and they're, they're not very healthy. And what I've come to believe now is that it's actually a great thing to spend time apart and have your own interests and your own hobbies. David just got back from a 10 day airplane and glider competition where he competed and went soaring. I was able to focus on my clients, my business, reading, writing, editing, photos, a scrapbooking and I um, was able to see friends that I haven't seen in a while and go run some races on my own and it was a very very fulfilling 10 days for both of us and I have come to since look back and say oh my gosh my past relationships all failed where I didn't believe that we should be spending a lot of time apart this is a belief that is is better one of the things I want to challenge you to do um, if you're really looking to create greater success in your life is ask yourself, what kind of beliefs do I have? What are my beliefs? What are my beliefs around how a business should work, how a team should function? What are my beliefs about my marriage or my relationship, my physical abilities? What are my beliefs about what I'm capable of? And then ask yourself, number two, are those beliefs serving me? Do they help me or do they harm me? Do they help me uh, get things done? Do they make things possible for me? Do they encourage me to go for it? Or do my beliefs sabotage me? Do they make me feel weak and like I'm not worthy and that it's not possible? I want you all to know that you have the ability to change your beliefs at any point in time. It doesn't matter how many years you've had your beliefs, how they were instilled in you, if you got them from childhood, but you have the ability to change your beliefs and alter them at any moment and stop Start believing something new. And the best way you can start to do that, by the way, is to get yourself new experiences. You can try the thing that you're afraid of. You can put yourself in front of people that have done before what you don't think you can do. You can go and talk to people or you can just start. You can just try to have a new belief or you can test that out. And, and once we change our experiences and we have a new experience with something and we get contradictory information, it's much easier to then kind of say, okay, I've gotten some evidence here that this works or this happens differently for me in a better way or it functioned in a better way. I think I'm gonna try that again. And over that process, you can and will change your beliefs. And if you don't change your beliefs, um, your life will play out in the same predictable ways that it always has. If you do put new beliefs there and allow yourselves to think new things about other people, about yourselves, about the world, you'll start to notice you operate in the world in a very, very different way. And in a lot of cases, when we change our beliefs, we operate in a much happier, healthier, more successful, powerful, controlled way. So if you wanna change your life and you're looking to alter your circumstances or what's going on for you, start with your beliefs, look to change them, figure out what experiences led to them, look to discount those if they don't make sense, get yourself new experiences, and, and start living a new life today. Um, with that, I hope everyone has a great day, and I can't wait to see you guys again soon. Thanks.